Hey everybody, good morning. Today is Thursday, February 9th, 2023. This is Ben Capozzi with Broad Shoulders Farm in beautiful Halifax County, Virginia, USDA Grows Zone 7B, right on the cusp of 8. Uh, it's a little windy right here, so I'll uh, try and keep this part brief before we move on to a more sheltered area. Um, yesterday was my birthday. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. And uh, I had three goals. Um, they were to record three videos and to put up 150 foot of uh, my perimeter fencing. Uh, I achieved one of those goals. So I'm here today uh, trying to knock out some additional videos. So uh, today I'm gonna be talking about um, more of the plantings that I've done along my uh, productive perimeter fencing system. I'm talking about peas, asparagus, strawberries, and more. If you're interested in that sort of thing, that's what's coming up next. I'll flip the camera around and we'll get going. Okay, so right now I am in the lower potato patch. Hey, little duck, little runner. Uh, I'm in the lower potato patch. And uh, actually, real quick, I can talk about a quick planting I did over here the other day. Uh, I took out um, some plants that didn't belong here anymore. Um, but this winter, the water runoff, especially in this area, was just terrible. Like, it's taken out a ton of the um, soil down there around the base of that uh, grapevine. So I just decided to kind of embrace the fact that this is a soggy area and we need a windbreak up here. So I put in uh, a row of sunchokes on that side and uh, a row of uh, French pussy willows there and a corkscrew willow uh, in that corner. And then there's one, two, three along here, uh, stream co willows. Uh, so willows are fast growing. They like the wet soil. I'm gonna retire at least this lower half of the potato patch. Um, to raise more uh, perennial crops and things that, that, that don't mind uh, occasional pretty soggy feet. Um, and, uh, and I will do the potatoes elsewhere. So uh, that's what's going on with that area right there. Um, all these trees are gonna be routinely pruned um, to create more trees um, as well as some fodder for the animals. So that's what's going on with that. Um, hey, guineas. I'm doing peas this year and I've never done peas before. Um, so I bought a, a five pound bag at uh, Abbott's Farm Garden and Gun, which is uh, our local uh, farm supply store. They're awesome. They've been in business like 40 years. Um, but I'm doing peas along the edge of uh, the trellis here, along the edge of the fence, which will become a natural trellis because I didn't want to set up a trellis someplace else. Uh, I already had this one set up and that's kind of the point is to work with the resources that I've got. Uh, I'm doing Super Sugar Snap, uh, which is a uh, pretty sweet, uh, fairly disease resistant and hardy variety. Um, nobody brings peas to our farmer's market, so I think it's a good opportunity for me. Um, I love them, and uh, any that don't sell or that uh, aren't eaten, I can always feed to the birds. That's kind of a running theme here for everything. Uh, the problem is, these characters right here, uh, nine times out of ten, one of them hops into this area in the morning, and that's usually because they're hopping from the roof over there. Um, so I've taken some steps this year that I didn't take last year to protect these crops from the guineas, who I love, but who are terrible. Not as bad as the geese, though. Um, and so basically what I do is I dig my trench, I hand sow the peas um, fairly densely. I cover them up with uh, a couple inches of, where is it, Daddy Pete's? Daddy Pete's cow manure is in there, uh, compost. And then because of characters like that one right there, the guineas, I this year have decided to put down a little bit of uh, chicken wire fencing and then weighted it down with bricks. I attached it to the fence with zip ties and that should protect the peas. Um, the peas, it was 80 bucks for a five pound bag. So peas are not cheap, um, but they are a really premium crop that I think my customers will like. And I know that I and my wife and Annie will like. And the problem is that the guineas, when they get trapped in an area like this, they will fly in and they will spend all day not knowing how to get out and they will just pace and pace and pace right up against the fence line. And you know, they'll trample these and then I'm sure they'll start to pick at them as they grow. So this is to help the peas get started and be safe. Uh, 
in a month or two, within a month or two, my plan is to actually move the Gannies to their own dedicated house out closer to the orchard so that when they come out in the morning, they stay close to the orchard and not to the paddocks. So uh, this is the first sowing in here. Uh, in two to four weeks, I'll do another sowing in this first corner up here. Two to four weeks after that, I'll do another sowing along the line there. And then two to four weeks after that, I'll do another sowing in the uh, far corner back there. Uh, I say two to four weeks because just reading my different sources, uh, there are different takes on whether or not peas are planted every 10 days for a good succession crop versus peas are planted every uh, 30 days for a good succession crop. So I'm going to have to work on figuring that out uh, and see what's what. But I would like to have a really good supply of peas for folks before uh, the weather turns really super hot. And then when it does, there's some shady areas over in the garden proper uh, where I think I can maybe grow some that they'll be happy. All right, let's go to the next patch and we'll be out of the wind. All right, so I've been yammering on for a while now about this productive perimeter fencing, talked about it in several videos. Um, I got some uh, Welsh onions um, in here at the base of a couple of these fruit trees. I got in some fruit trees probably since our last video and this is just the opposite side right now of where we were talking about the peas but I got uh, an enterprise apple in here and a couple others uh, got some Welsh bunching onions in there as well actually got some really neat onions from uh, planting justice nursery out in California they had a really nice selection of uh, perennial aliens so uh, I've still got to put in the fence in here this is the uh, upper potato patch on the other side of this fence here I'm still clearing out this uh, goose foot that was left here. But when I say I'm trying to make the most use of it and get a lot of bed space, it's exactly what I'm doing. I can do corn in here, rutabagas, squash, um, melons. There's a ton of stuff that I can get in these <coughs> beds. And you see, it was quite a ways. I have not been slack. I've put all 150 plus stakes, uh, oak stakes that I got from Tuck Farms in the ground. And I have put up so far to about 320 feet of, no, 450, over 450 feet of uh, that fencing. That corner back there is where we're heading, but you can just see if you look there on the right. all this space and it goes around the corner down there where that tub is it hangs to the left comes all the way down that paddock and about halfway uh to the far far fence um, and that's when i ran out um and i have more that will be freed up once i finish getting these asparagus crowns into the ground so this is uh uh an unusual case and you could probably do a lot better uh, I'm slightly embarrassed to talk about this, but uh, this is where I've been putting them. I found <laughs> a box of asparagus crowns that I completely forgot about and ignored from last year. And so I've been soaking them overnight. Yesterday I got about, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 or more feet planted. Um, and I'd spread hay here, uh, piled some piled, uh, hay here pretty thickly uh, last year. And of course the ducks have been waddling it down and trampling it, um, but it did suppress a lot of the grass growth that was on here. And I'm just working my way down the line here to that gate that you see there on the right, where the, uh, that's entrance and exit to uh, winter quarters for the laying flock that are chilling in there. Another few weeks guys, then you all go out into the orchard proper here through February and then in March they start their rotation if everything goes well but regardless um so what I've been doing in here is you may look at this and be like this is in no way a proper prepared raised bed or any kind of bed it's not a raised bed at all any kind of proper prepared bed for asparagus if you look at different videos and reading stuff there's all kinds of like deep trenches that you have to dig and amendments and you know changes so like it's just it's crazy um but we had a really nice patch of asparagus uh, in the middle of the garden that was planted by Grandpa Ralph, my wife's grandfather, um, that far outlived he and his wife. Um, and it was still producing just a little bit when I got up here. And there's wild asparagus, not wild, but there are 
there is asparagus growing wild up here from all over where the birds would come and take those seeds and just drop them out in the middle of the field and the asparagus would do fine. So uh, that kind of gave me the idea that I may be able to do something similar. Um, and I'm also a big fan of Ruth Stout uh, gardening style with uh, lots of hay where you're building soil up uh, instead of necessarily digging down. Um, and so I thought I could do this with asparagus and there are videos on this from other folks who are doing this. The cultivar I'm thinking makes a bit of a difference because it is Millennium, which was uh, breed, uh, bred in Canada to handle heavy clay soils. So I'm giving this a try. Uh, so don't judge, your results may vary. Your results probably will vary. You could probably do much better than I'm gonna do here, but I'm still gonna do it and see how we do. So I've got one year old crowns uh, and I've got uh, a not very deep trench, but that's what's going on here. So let me show you um, what I do to uh, get a section ready. Uh, and then I'll show you how I co-plant with strawberries. So give me just a sec here. All right, so the asparagus crowns are in the ground. You can see they uh, they look kind of like a little octopi if you've never ordered crowns before. Um, and you just kind of spread them out and uh, we've got them in their trench. And I'm gonna come back, I'll cover all this over with dirt. And you know, like this is definitely a pretty uh, janky uh, or crazy, <laughs> lazy, I don't know, kind of way to do this. Um, I'm not promising this is gonna work and I'm not promising that uh, these are viable. Um, I think they may be, at least a percentage of them. So I'm gonna plant them and uh, if they don't work out, uh, at least I've added some more organic matter to the soil and uh, you know, try to do a, a lesson learned, but you know, I'm not a super accomplished gardener uh, or poultry keeper or YouTube person uh, in any respect. I'm just a guy trying to earn a good living for his family, doing the best I can here, trying to learn as I go. Um, I'd like for my wife to ultimately be able to retire early and not have to work her job. And uh, I'd like to have healthy food for my kids, so. Uh, and my customers, so that's that's what we're doing here, so. Uh, your mileage will probably definitely vary on this. Look at that. That is an Egyptian Fayumi chicken. And uh, when I dug that up, uh, there were a lot of worms in there. So they have been sticking their heads through there. I don't think I need to add any extra fencing. The chickens can only go so far and they're not really gonna be in this area when these things are growing. Okay, so anyhow, so I come back in and I push the soil over. So let me do that. I'll go and grab my uh, Daddy Pete's cow manure and add some compost to this as well. Um, and then I'll drop in the strawberry plugs and I'll show you how that happens. Realized I could use a little additional hay and some uh, cow manure, so just bringing this over. Hello, ducks. All right, so I just very quickly use the pick to dig holes for the plugs. About every, I don't know, what is that? Six to 10 inches or so. Hello. Those aren't for you yet. You gotta wait. If you just wait, there will be a ton that we can share. So then uh, I drop the plugs in and I'll come back. I'll push the soil back around them and I grab some uh, rotting straw, or sorry, hay, and I'll top it with all that. And then I'll put in the next few rows, or sorry, I'll secure the next two sections of fencing. I don't know that I'm gonna make it all the way to the end uh, today. Uh, it's already almost 11 and I need to be home by noon to relieve my wife so she can get some sleep for work tonight. So we will see how far it goes, but, uh, let me finish this up real quick. I got to go get some more plugs, um, on the other side of the farm. Uh, I got, uh, 50 plugs for, I think it was like 39 bucks or whatever, maybe less at, uh, Abbott's here in town. So, uh, I feel like that's a pretty good deal. I got three trays. These are Sweet Charlie, which is a good variety around here. Super, super sweet strawberries. Uh, it's only a June bear though. I, uh, I wish uh, I'd had a, an ever bear, but you can always add them uh, elsewhere on the farm at a later date. So let me go get those and I'll be right back and we'll wrap this up. Okay, so the strawberries and the asparagus are in. They're mulched in and I've got the fencing up to protect them from marauding waterfowl. And uh, we're supposed to get a little bit of rain. 
Is that Buck? Hey, Buck. I don't have my glasses on, but I think that's Buck. Yeah, that's Buck, my Buckeye. He's a good boy. Hope to find him some ladies. Um, yeah, sorry, it's supposed to rain uh, a little bit tonight and then a little bit again on uh, Friday as well. So that's good to help water all this in. I had some extra hay in the uh, cart, so I just put it down here. It'll be fine. It'll be ready for when I come back next. The ducks and the geese will probably come and mess it up and hang out in it and mash it down for me. So it'll be fine. It just makes the soil better when I get back. Um, I was thinking as I was doing all this, you know, I'm, I, I think it's obvious, but you know, I'm not saying this is totally how you should plant your asparagus and strawberries. Uh, I think none of the stuff that I do is, is me saying that. I hope it's just more like, this is what I'm doing. Uh, this is something I'm trying. Um, I'm enthusiastic about it. Um, I hope you like it. Um, if you think you can help me out with uh, comments, uh, that's great too. Um, but uh, the main point of this is not to say, yeah, this is how everybody should be doing their stuff. This is about me trying to do something uh, extra with marginal space, the space outside of a fence. Um, you know, if I, I also have, you know, a proper garden uh let's set up uh out that way with 16 raised beds and that's where more stuff is going to be happening but what i've been working on this winter is this making the most of a marginal space uh if i do a good job i will have extra food for my family and for my livestock to lower my bills if i do a great uh, job maybe i will even have extra product to sell to customers um, and make a little extra income, which would be fantastic. So uh, let me talk about the last marginal space and I'll see if I can figure out how to do that thing where the camera speeds up. Okay, and this is about where I ran out of uh, wire the other day uh, when I worked on this for my birthday. But this bed back here, this is at the northernmost part of the garden. This is one of the paddocks for the chickens. That's another one of the paddocks for the chickens over there. There's the forest tree line. This area in here I'm referring to as the moat for the moat for the waterfowl to cruise through year round. Um, but this is going to be a bed for uh, raspberries. I've got uh, 10 varieties and uh, 30 plants coming uh, next week. And I'm going to put them back here. And this will be another um, hopefully productive bed. Um, it's the, the northernmost, so it will get shade as these uh, trees that have been planted along here grow up. And raspberries, unlike blackberries, don't want full sun all the time. Um, but it's a slightly wider bed. I made this about three feet instead of the two feet or two and a half of the other bed. Um, so I've got more room to, to get some stuff. Uh, the plants have more room to grow and I've got more room to root them and propagate them and such. But again, this is, this is just marginal space. I'm just trying to figure out something productive to do with marginal space. Maybe I can trellis some melons along the outer edge of this fence as well. Uh, or extra tomatoes. Um, you know, there's there's a lot to be done here, but I'm just just trying to produce a lot. <laughs> and the good thing is that if it fails, okay, I learned. If I can improve it, I can try it again. But if it's just a failure, that's okay. I can figure out something else. Time to move on to the next iteration. If it succeeds, it just helps me feed the livestock, which, you know, I mean, my farm's biggest cost right now is the feed bill. And of course, over the winter, it's always going to be worse for the worst for everybody. But, um, you know, even in the uh, uh, springtime, the rest of the season, the growing season, you know, it's still significant. So it's good to grow as much as you can. And that's the whole idea here is to eventually get off of that stuff completely if that's 
reasonable and the birds would still have um, an adequate diet. So that's where we are. Sorry for such a long video. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, I've got a bunch of clover seed that I'm gonna, sorry, last thing, I've got a bunch of clover that I'm gonna sow in this bed um, before the rain comes tomorrow. At least that's the goal. I got a five pound bag of perennial white uh, in the trunk of the car I need to put out here. Okay, that's it. Questions, comments, concerns, helpful critique are always welcome. Uh, you can follow the farm at Broad Shoulders Farm on Facebook and Instagram. Wherever you are, whatever you're up to, I hope that you and those you care for are happy, healthy, and well. And I will talk to you guys and gals later. Ciao.